Okay, so uh, we are going to do chapter 6 now. So we're starting with 6.1. And this chapter is not going to be quite as long as the uh, one that we did before. The other one was nine sections. I think this one's only six sections. Um, and basically, this chapter is going to be about using rational expressions and simplifying rational expressions. And you'll kind of understand a little bit more about that as we go through. Uh, so today we're going to be evaluating nth roots and using rational expressions. And uh, basically... What that means is, with the nth roots, we're going to talk about different things other than just square roots. So everything we've done up until now has been all with, like, square root of 4, square root of 9, and different square roots, you know, square root of 8, things like that. And that we just call that square root because that's the general form. What we're going to talk about today is something is things that are not just a square root, things like cube roots, or fourth root, or fifth root, sixth root, etc., all the way... Uh, to wherever we need it. So let's get through uh, some vocabulary here. It says, in general, for an integer n greater than 1, if b of n or b to the n is equal to a, then b is an nth root of a. Okay, and nth root of a is written as, and then you see this square root sign, but notice you see this little n there. That n represents what root we're taking. So when you see this, we don't write a 2 here. We don't really need to. So it's, that's just the general form. So whenever you see it without a number, it's just a square root. Whenever you see a number, it's going to be the third root, fourth root, whatever n is going to be. Okay, and we call that n an index of the radical. Okay, so... Here's some examples of how we write this now. And this is important. So the square root of a, this is how we write them as powers. So the square root of a will always be equal to a to the 1 half. The third root will always be equal to a to the 1 third. And the fourth root will be equal to a to the 1 fourth and then so on. So it's, it's showing you how you can write square roots as exponents. All square roots are is just exponents. And that's how we're going to start dealing with those is as exponents and figure out what to do with them. So here's some rules for us. We're dealing with roots. Okay, so if, if our root that we're taking is an even root, so like square root, fourth root, sixth root, eighth root, then this is what's true. If what's underneath the a is negative, then we will get no real roots. For example, the square root of negative 5. We get no real roots. Easy enough. Okay, if we take the square root or fourth root of, or sixth root of zero, the only answer we get is zero, just one answer. And then the last one is if we get a positive number, we're actually going to get two answers. So like technically, if I take the square root of four, the answer to that is technically, even though we don't usually do this, it's plus or minus two. We don't usually use the negative two because when we talk about square roots, we're talking about things like area. And you're never going to have a negative, you know, if you have a positive 4 area, you can't have a negative width and a negative length, things like that. So we almost always just call it a positive, but technically there is two answers there. It's plus or minus. And the same thing would be true if I did the fourth root of 16. That is also plus or minus 2. And basically what the fourth root of 16 means is 2 to the fourth power equals 16. On the other side, if our integer is odd, things are a little bit different. We're going to get one solution all the way down, one real solution all the way down. For example, the third root of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 because negative 1 times itself three times is equal to negative 1. The third root of 0, again, is going to give us 0. So we get one solution again. And then if we do, say, like the third root of 8, we will only get one answer. That answer is going to be 2. The reason why it can't be negative 2, again, look, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 actually gives us negative 8, and that's not what we want. That's why it cannot be a negative 2. Okay, that's why it doesn't work. Okay, so moving on, let's, let's talk about what these problems down here are asking. It says, find the indicated ru real nth roots of a. 
Okay, so we have n equals 4 and a equals 625. So basically writing that out, we're going to do 4 to the 4th root of 625, which is basically the same thing as saying x to the 4th power equals 625. So we're looking for, all, for the value of x that when we raise it to the 4th power will equal 625. And our answer here, and you guys can test this, but you'll get used to this as you do it a little bit more. Our answer is plus or minus 5. Because 5 to the 4th power is 625, and negative 5 to the 4th power is 625. Okay, that should be easy enough. On this one over here, we have the third root of negative 64. And again, that's like saying x to the 3rd equals negative 64. And we find that our answer here is x equals negative 4. And again, not plus or minus because it's an odd root. An odd root will only give us one answer. And that's really all we're doing to start this out is just to get you used to the different types of roots and how we can write them a little bit different. Okay, so let's move on. So what we want to talk about now is once we start getting roots and once we start having fractions in our powers, we want to understand how to manipulate that. So these first ones, we should be able to do these without a calculator, and I'm going to show you how, but we have a couple of uh, properties here. So a to the m over n. So what you notice is a to the m over n, and I'll write this a little bit bigger, can be written as a to the 1 over n, and then the m can go on the outside. And if you remember, our properties of exponents tells us that if I have a power to a power, I'm just multiplying. So if I multiply 1 over n times m, this is what I get. So we can separate it like this. And the same thing is true that when you have you know, a to the negative, you can turn it into, you just bring that to the bottom and put the fraction in the bottom as such here. And then what we do is from here, we can change now because a to the 1 over n is the same thing as saying the nth root of a. So that's how we're going to do these problems down here. So let's get right into it. So 4 to the 5 over 2. What we're going to do is we're going to first rewrite this as 4 to the 1 half to the 5th power. 4 to the 1 half is the same thing as square root. It's the same thing as saying square root of 4, which equals 2. But don't forget, we still have this fifth power up here. So we need to go 2 to the fifth power. And that is equal to 32. So we just did that without using a calculator. Okay, so we're going to do 81 to the 3 fourths now. And hopefully this will make sense. It's the same thing as what we did before. We're going to do 81 to the 1 fourth power. That will be on the inside. And then we'll do our third power on the outside. So this ends up being the fourth root of 81. which is actually equal to 3. And then we still need to do our 3 to the third power, which is equal to 26. So we did that without a calculator. Okay, so now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to do it with the calculator. So a couple of different ways. So you see we have the fourth root of 16 to the fifth power here. So there's a couple ways that we can look at doing this. Now, this is going to equal a whole number, but it's not always going to equal a whole number. So the first way that I look at this is writing, rewriting this as a fraction. I think that's the easiest way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 16 to the 1 fourth power to the fifth power. Now, using our properties of exponents, all we're doing is going in the reverse direction. So it's 5 times 1 fourth, so that will actually equal 16 to the five-fourths power. So now, when you have 16 to the five-fourths, real, real, real simple to do this into the to do this using the calculator. So give me a second here. I'm going to pause it so I can open up the calculator program, and then that's where we'll start at. 
Okay, so we're in the calculator, and we want 16 to the 5 fourths. Watch how easy this is. Now, most of you already know how to do this, but here's what I want to make sure that we are very, very aware of. So when I do 16, and then I raise my power, the most important part is right here. You have to put your power in parentheses. Because if you don't do 5 over 4 in parentheses, it will not register as the 5 fourths being uh, in that. Now, your calculator, it may work without the parentheses because now it actually raises it up to a power now. So that may work. So let's try that real quick while we're doing this. So 16. Okay, so we didn't put parentheses at that time. Let's see if we still get 32. And we do. So that's perfect. So because the calculators actually raise it to the power now, then we're in good shape. So our answer there is 32. Now, real quick, I do want to show you, if you want to put it in as your actual root, you can do that. So real quick here, we will go to our math function. Now you notice down here, right here at 5, it's that x. Okay, so that's x root. So what you'd want to do is we'd have to go back. We want to be fifth root, no I'm sorry, we wanted the fourth root, so we would want four, math, choose five, so there, notice it changes it to the fourth root of you, uh, for you, then we do 16, on the outside, we want it to the fifth power, hit enter, and you get 32 still. So that's both ways. You can use uh, the calculator doing it that way. But I think you understand, if you change it to your fraction, it's a whole lot easier. You don't have to worry about inputting the root correctly, things like that. So, all right, let's finish this up. All right, so now we're just going to solve a couple of equations here. And we're going to do this just like we normally would. So the idea is we want to get our variable by itself with its power so we can use our roots to solve it. So the first thing we need to get rid of here is our 1 half. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. So we will be left with the 1 half and the 2 cancel out, so we're left with x to the 5th equals 1024. Now, what we do is we take the 5th root. Anytime we want to get rid of an exponent, we take that root of what we were trying to get rid of. So because it was the 5th power, we, we take the 5th root. And that equals the 5th root of 1024. So again, the fifth root and the fifth and the fifth power cancel out. So we're left with x equals, and we just have 1,024 to the one fifth power. And you can put that in the calculator. You can put this in the calculator. It doesn't really matter. And we get x equals four. Now remember, because it was an odd root, we only have one answer. If it was an even root, we'd have to have plus or minus. So let's go over here. Now, here's the one confusing part that people miss. People think that we're going to minus 5 here first, but we're not because it's the entire thing to the fourth power. Really important. Always get rid of the powers first if you can or if you have to. So because the power is really the only thing left, everything's to the fourth power, we will take the fourth root of x plus 5 to the fourth power. And then we're going to do the fourth root to the other side. And remember, that's plus or minus. So the fourth power and the fourth root cancel out, so we're left with x plus 5 equals the plus or minus fourth root of 16 is plus or minus 2. So we have two equations to solve. x plus 5 equals 2, and x plus 5 equals negative 2. Minus 5, minus 5, we get x equals negative 3. minus 5, minus 5, we get x equals negative 7. And with that bell, we are done for the day. So again, bring questions tomorrow uh, and let me know, you know what makes sense and what doesn't. And we will be working on this uh, tomorrow in class. See ya.